All right. Hey there. I'm Waka Patui here with John Miller, and we're going to talk about Minecraft. <gasps> so, Minecraft is that game where the kids spend thousands of hours building things, right? Building things uh, and destroying things, yes. Oh, cool. And you claim to teach in this environment. I do. I teach it in uh, seventh grade, which is, uh, uh, for me, it's world history. World history through building and destruction. Yeah, that ought to about cover it, huh? <laughs> that does. That, that covers a lot of world history, unfortunately. But I also like to use it to teach a, a, kind of the, the cultural side of, uh, of the world. So you must have people that when they initially hear you're running a class inside of the Minecraft environment are a bit, uh, what's the word, skeptical, let's say. Yeah, I, I do. There's uh, folks that don't really understand it, how, could, how it could be used in a school rather than just at home because they, they say their, their kids are addicted to it at home and I don't want them playing it at school because it's just, uh, uh, that's just too much. I want them to be able to do more traditional things at school. Right. The, the parents are like, um, I send my kids to school to get them off of Minecraft. Exactly, yeah. And... Uh, I use it to try to drop my kids into another time and into another place so that they can uh, pretend to be somebody else, somewhere else, and that they can also learn history. I call it kind of learning history from the inside out. Interesting. So what's an example of a project your kids might do to learn history from the inside out? What does that look like? Well, uh, an example that I did last year that was very successful was uh, we, we studied... Uh, medieval China, okay. and specifically we studied the, the Tang Dynasty, which was kind of a, a wonderful time for uh, medieval China, and it was a, a, a great age, a golden age for literature and for art. Cooking? And cooking, too. Yeah. Is, that, oh, yeah. is that where we get the word Tongs? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that. We'll have to check no. that out. If you know the answer, let us know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so they, uh, they have all this great, uh, passionate, uh, uh, artists that developed this, this wonderful, uh, world. And so I thought I want my students to be able to experience that too. So I found a, uh, a diagram of the capital city, which is named Chong'ong, and it's on the internet, uh, and it was, it's, was very well laid out. It had up to 2 million people in it in the 10th century, which is pretty insane. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And they, they laid it out in formal fashion, so it was a grid, a walled city. And so I, I laid out inside the walls of the city the streets, and my students had studied the uh, medieval China, and they'd studied social structure, and they studied... Uh, uh, how the people lived and their houses and buildings and the emperor and royalty and all those things. And I thought it would be neat to actually now build it and to uh, populate it too. So I had my students self kind of evaluate themselves as where they would be in as far as Minecraft builders. Okay. Were you an advanced player? Are you an intermediate player? Are you a beginner? And then I broke it up the city into kind of zones uh, and I assigned my students that were kind of in the beginners. They worked in teams, and they built the peasant homes, which was further away from the center of the city. Sort of a caste system of learning? Exactly. Ouch. <laughs> learning about the caste system. Uh, and then we had the intermediate players. They built the farms and pasture lands and some of the government buildings. And then I had the more advanced kids work on marketplaces, open-air markets, uh, palaces, and royal gardens. Now, were they working in teams, too? They were. They, they, some of them were only in teams of two or three, but mm -hmm. I had as many as teams of six. And I did this for each of my periods. I taught five periods of history. So we would begin the build on first period, and they would build in their areas, and then my second period students would come in, and they would build in their areas, and my third period, and so on. Oh, so you had one walled city for all of the kids. Yes. Excellent. It, so really, you had, is this one grade level? 
one grade level. So, so. full grade level collaboration on one giant project? 165 students. Wow. Right. Uh, it, was, it was pretty wild. I didn't know how well it was going to work, but I took a time lapse every day uh, from each period. When each period ended, I would do a little flyover of the city uh, and record it. And so at the end of each day, I had five flyovers. And I would merge those when the project was done, which was after five days. And you could see the, the city rise out of nothing. Whoa. Uh, and the kids loved it. It was when they came in the next day, they could hardly wait to get in to see what the, the previous four periods had completed. So they learned about all this stuff using more conventional means before they applied it to the Minecraft world? Correct, yes. It was the, uh, we used it with, uh, I, I guided the kids through the, the process, uh, internet researching, uh, some slideshows that I created, that they created. We role played a lot. We did some of this right here. Really? It's because I, exactly. Wow. I want them to think where they are, and we, 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 we put on costumes and try to act things out too. Awesome. Uh, then, at the end of the build, I, I want my students to write because uh, I think that's absolutely critical. I want them to reflect on it, but I also want them to write about the people that were actually inside their buildings, whoever they were. Oh, okay. So they went out uh, on the internet and they found some Chinese names, and they had to, using a, 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 a model I gave them, they had to come up with uh, the, the people that lived in or worked in the buildings that they built, what were their names, was it a family, what were their children's names, uh, what were their occupation, uh, what was their life like, uh, were they, what were they eating, if it was in a, a food stall that they worked in. Now, had you ever done this before Minecraft came along, like done this kind of journaling activity? Not to this extent, and to be able to actually have them uh, build something physically and then write about it, I hadn't done it that way, and so this was new. Okay. Yeah, because this, I, I've heard like pioneer diaries or whatever, we're always trying to get our students, especially in cultural studies or social studies, to think about how life was and to really put themselves in someone else's shoes, yeah. and I guess building the whole city got to be a good way to do that. Oh, I, I, I was so pleased with the outcome. It was, uh, they, they write about it, and we use Google Docs to write about it, but then they posted it in Minecraft, and it's called an information block where you can put text. So the kids then typed it into Minecraft. Whoa. Uh, and then, then when we finished the project, uh, everybody got to go into the city and wander around, and then you click on the block, and you could read who lived there and who, what their life was like and why the, the, the poorer people lived further from the city and why the more wealthy people had the larger homes and lived uh, closer to the emperor's palace or what the, the government workers did, what their job was like. Nice. That seems like an amazing way to get a whole bunch of kids to look at each other's work. Uh, yeah, I was very pleased with how it turned out they uh, we did this all in just seven class periods which I, I thought was uh, uh, the perfect time and yet I, I when I started the project I thought maybe this is going to take much longer and it's going to be too involved and what am I getting myself into and as I mapped it out I thought you know I, I think they can do this and by Oh, the end of the first day, I realized, yeah, this is going to be a real success. These kids are, are on it. They're very enthused uh, about learning and building, and they were coming in at lunchtime uh, every day. Just like they always did with history, right? Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, to build more. Uh, they were helping each other. Uh, the, the beginner kids were being helped by the more intermediate advanced kids, uh, and they just, they just didn't want to stop, so... So you've mentioned a couple times about how they worked in teams and worked together. I, I always saw, like, Minecraft, I imagine a child sitting in a very dark room in front of a computer screen, you know, isolated for the rest of the world. But you're telling me there's actually social skill development that happens inside of these projects? Oh, most definitely. Uh, I, Minecraft, I started to play it, and when I started to first got into Minecraft... You can play in a single-player mode or you can play in a multiplayer mode. And when you're playing in a single-player, 
I think Minecraft really is a game, and it's just me against the elements and uh, yeah, the or, zombies. Exactly. <laughs> uh, or uh, if I was in creative mode, what do I feel like creating today? But as soon as you turn on multiplayer and you invite other people in and you just start discussing, well, what do we want to do? You start strategizing about uh, if you're playing in a survival mode, how are we going to survive? What kind of a, a building Ooh, should we build? Right. Uh, who's responsible for doing this? Who's responsible for doing that? What kind of a timeline are we going to set up? Where are we going to uh, move off to after this? We're in a... a, a uh, snowy biome now do we want to move it to a desert to get more resources uh, where do we find these other resources we, we want to advance in this game and the, the teamwork that's involved in the collaboration is 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 just off the charts with minecraft that's great now i understand you've after sharing what you've done have been invited to talk to teachers well, kind of all over the place about Minecraft in education. And I imagine they're not all history teachers. What are other teachers in other subject areas doing with Minecraft? I've yet to, to find a real a subject area that a teacher hasn't already created something that is just absolutely wonderful with it. There are, uh, in Minecraft EDU, which is the version I use, we have, there's blocks in there that are math blocks. So they've got numbers and uh, uh, equations you can write with them. Okay. Uh, it's fabulous for graphing. It's fabulous for determining uh, ratios and proportions. Every block in Minecraft is a, a cubic meter. Ah. So you can, uh, there's a lot of schools that uh, for one of the first projects they do is they have their students go to Google Earth and get the Google Earth view and then measure the school using the ruler and recreate their and entire they build school. The school. Right. And then the kids, of course, absolutely love the fact that once they get the school built, they can populate it with zombies. and, and, and Just like every day. <laughs> and have a lot of fun uh, going and uh, uh, playing in survival mode in their classrooms, which is great. Nice. Uh, there's fabulous science applications, too. Uh, there's people who are modeling giant cells, animal cells. There's a quantum physics that is being explained in Minecraft. No there's way. A, uh, chemistry, there's circuitry, uh, there's computer programming that's done. Uh, I mentioned the writing aspect of it. You can write inside of Minecraft. There are, uh, like I said, on information blocks, but there are also books in Minecraft. So oh. kids can type and write books. You can at, give them uh, an assignment that you would like them to do, and they can turn it in in Minecraft. They can send you a book with their answers that sounds almost as good as turning in a paper-based essay almost but not yeah not quite close close oh, so close <laughs> uh you can put links in minecraft too so the kids can click on a link and it will open up a web page and so if you wanted them to answer something in a google doc or type something in a google doc or in a google form uh interact with a website watch a video and then come back to minecraft and and do something. So you can really kind of use Minecraft as a classroom portal. Yes. Wow. There are, are teachers that have in, have built and kind of uh, deployed their entire curriculum inside of Minecraft. So the students have that option of uh, learning in a more, uh, I guess I'll say traditional sense, where they're in the classroom where they're doing some alternative uh, assignments, uh, uh, creating something that they wanted to do, or they could do their project in Minecraft and do their learning inside of Minecraft, too. Wow. And then if the kids get off task, you could, like, sick the creepers on them. You've got it. Yeah, you, wow. can, uh, you can freeze the kids. You can, uh, uh, you can uh, lock them in. You can put what are called border blocks so they can't run away. Uh, or they can't destroy things, too. If you build up something that's really cool and you don't want uh, anything... Uh, destroyed. Uh, there's there's safeguards to for that. Denmark should have done that. Did they you hear about that? Oh, they should Such have done mess. that, and it's it had to be Americans too. What do you right? Know? But their their reaction was, well, that's the freedom of the internet. They're they're pretty mature. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would. I I don't know what I would do <laughs> if that was my. Server. I don't think it would have been publishable. Uh, no, not I if don't it was think me. So. I, can, I can get my rage on. <laughs> Well, John Miller on Minecraft in the classroom, thank you so much for talking to us. We hope you 
come up with some great ideas and share them with us about how you could use Minecraft in your classroom to leverage, you know, what your students already want to do for learning. Absolutely.